Hi everyone, my name is David. Um, I'm from, as um, they introduced me, back to the Accounts Lab, and I'll give you a brief talk about my project investigating the fungal microbiome of cystic fibrosis patient lungs. Um, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder caused by, uh, most of the time, loss of function in the gene CFTR. Um, and it causes a lot of different effects on the human body, but mostly I'm interested in uh, its effect on patient airways, where it causes a thin mucus buildup, uh, which provides a favorable environment for microbial infections to occur. Uh, so, for example, chronobacterial infections, such as pseudomonasurgenosa and burkholderia species, cause respiratory complications, eventually in patient death. Um, along with this bacterial uh, counterparts, uh, fungal microbes, such as candida and aspergillus species, are also often isolated from these patient sputum samples, uh, which I'll be focusing on today. Um, so, something about fungal pathogens, these are eukaryotic pathogens, uh, and worldwide it affects billions of people and kills uh, around 1.5 million people per year. Um, in cases of invasive mycosis, have uh, increased especially among immunocompromised patients, such as patients who have gone through, let's say, uh, um, immunosuppressant uh, therapies uh, after organ transplant, or patients who are affected by HIV. With high mortality rate, uh, often exceeding 50%, and very limited number of clinically relevant drugs, these uh, pathogens pose significant threat in clinical environments. And today, I'll focus on single uh, Fungal pathogen, Kendall Alkins. So, Kendall, well, Kendall species are the most common cause of hospital acquired fungal infection, where Kendall Alkins accounts for more than 90% of the Kendall infections. Uh, Kendall Alkins is a diploid organism, and it is able to switch between multiple morphologies, such as its yeast form under standard lab conditions, such as 30 degrees and rich media. Uh, as well as these different hyphae and pseudo forms, which I'll just call them, call them filaments, uh, under specific cues, such as increased temperature, uh, presence of serum, uh, as well as cell stress. Um, one thing to note about these kind of uh, morphological switch uh, is that it's thought to be a very important virulence trait in um, candida alphagans, where any Mutants that are locked in either state and not respond to environmental cues are thought to be a virulent in models such as bloodstream infection model. Furthermore, Kendall is the second leading cause of allergic broncopulmonary mycosis after uh, other fungal pathogens, aspergillus, uh, which uh, is even more interesting uh, in case of cystic fibrosis. So. With, um, with this, I'll kind of summarize what I've done so far was to, uh, with the help of Dr. David Kong from uh, LMP and his graduate student, Sean Clark, we have extensive collection of sputum samples from uh, over 200 CF patients. And from here, we have isolates from 25 CF patients, um, and I've summarized uh, them individually. So I'll go through the summary uh, where in the x-axis I have a list of patients. Um, each dot represents a single isolate from a patient. And uh, the color represents different species of it. In case of C. alpicans, I've divided into two categories where uh, blue indicates any C. alpicans isolates that show wild type like growth under standard condition. So it does not filament and it grows as yeast, whereas a red ice I read thoughts for CLP isolates that were constitutionally filamentous even under a standard condition. Um, so, uh, and uh, I also did some uh, drug resistance assay where I did the isolates in three discrete scales, uh, resistant, variable, and sensitive uh, over replicates. And what I think is one of the most interesting things that I find is that um, other than the diversity of species, I see these consistent isolation of constitutionally fill with the C. albicans isolates over time. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this is a, the ability to switch between different form is a very important virulence trait. So I was curious what may be causing these phenotypes. So I've turned to whole genome sequencing for this. Um, and thanks to Dr. Cody Nislow and Ron Marr, we were able to 
and for isomers for sequencing um, in hopes to identify genetic changes that may be associated with this phenotype. So here's the same type of plot that I'm showing instead of focusing on a single patient where I had a constituted CL prince, a film with the CL prince isomers uh, present. So on the x-axis now it's a timeline where each cluster of dots represent a sampling point. So from here I've chosen two isolates again that shows wild type light growth under standard condition. You can see they grow as yeast. And two isolates from different type points that show filamentous growth under standard condition. And uh, I've compared <coughs> uh, their the whole genome sequencing data. And what I was able to identify was a single uh, homozygous non synonymous mutation in a gene called NRG1. Uh, this gene is a known transcription factor and the repressor of filamentation, so which indicated it was a very good candidate. Um, so here, and furthermore, this mutation was identified in its highly conserved DNA binding domain. So here I'm showing you the growth phenotype of F2 under standard condition. You can see it's uh, filamenting. Here is Y1 under the same condition where it grows as yeast. Um, as I mentioned earlier, C. albicans is a diploid organism, so when I knock out one copy of NRG1, that has no effect. And when I replace the remaining copy of NRG1 with the butin copy, uh, you can see that it's now filamenting under the same condition. And vice versa, when I um, introduce wild type copy into F2, which usually shows filamentous growth, you can see that the yeast growth is restored. And at the bottom here, I have and there you want null um, just from a different strain background to show that this is probably due to the loss of function in the larger one. Um, what's even more interesting about this is that, as I mentioned earlier, I'm seeing these filamentous isolates um, uh, isolated over time um, between different patients. And when I actually sequence the NRG1 gene of these filamentous isolates from a different patient, all of them have mutations that potentially are probably uh, loss of function in NRG1. For example, in CF198, all six of the isolates that show constituted filamentous growth have deletion of around 100 base pairs, which introduces premature stuff going on in the middle of the gene. Um, two isolates from CF33 have premature stuff going on in the middle of the gene. Five isolates from CF28 have different premature stuff going on. And Two of the isolates from CF33 have non synonymous mutation, whereas one of the isolates from the same patient shows premature stop order in the middle of the gene, which uh, tells me that there's there's there could be some sort of um, fitness advantage in because all these different isolates from the different patients of presumably different strain background are converging on a single phenotype uh, slash single gene. Um, with this in mind, I guess I'll talk a little bit more into about the uh, uh, a little more biomedic side of my project, which uh, I've been working very closely with uh, the lab, Dr. David Goldman's lab, uh, from with Pauline, Julia, and Lou, and is to do ITS sequencing. ITS regions are these variable regions that are flanked by highly conserved fungal rRNA genes, and Sequencing this region is analogous to doing a 16S sequencing for examining bacterial communities. So our, for our goal is to isolate sputum DNA uh, <coughs> directly uh, and amplify ITS1 or two regions uh, and sequence uh, using high throughput sequencing method and describe the fungal community uh, without, uh, hopefully without the bias that may be caused by culture-based method that I've been focused so far. Um, so that is all I have to say about my project. Um, this is actually on the way right now, and we've done some preliminary work, and we seem to be getting a very good um, pullout of genus from the mock community that we made. So we hope to apply this very soon. Um, with that, I'd like my supervisor, and Lai Cowan, and my committee members, as well as the rest of the Cowan lab, and my collaborators. I had a question about your drug screen. It said that sensitive was more than twice the normal rate and, and resistant was less than twice. 
normal rate? Did I understand that correctly? Um, so I've used the uh, fixed concentration of drug. Uh, sorry, so I may not have explained this uh, correctly, but uh, I've been the isolates as resistant if their relative growth uh, compared to no drug growth uh, is twice greater than what I would call a wild type laboratory reference strain. And I've been the isolates as sensitive if their relative growth is less than twofold of wild type. So this is an arbitrary uh, cutoff. Um, I could have done MIC to show all the different actual MICs, but uh, here we one of the primary goal uh, we wanted to do was to kind of bend the different isolates together. And what I actually did not mention uh, is that some of the different species actually are resistant entirely uh, under this kind of criteria. So I can bend them easily when I'm phenotyping all these isolates. So this is probably a dumb question from somebody who doesn't know anything about the LCL, but it's normally diploid, right? Yes. And aren't you surprised to see so many homozygous mutations as opposed to two different uh, mm -hmm. deleterious mutations in this gene? Yes, yes, uh, it's, it's very surprising. Uh, but uh, one thing that is interesting about Candida is it, it goes through a lot of, uh, it's, uh, it, it is able to, uh, maybe it's the other way around, but is it able to en en uh, become any any fluidy, produce any fluidy so easily? Through. So it, I, I believe uh, it is able to lose and gain chromosome very easily under different stresses. So, so it's the two n minus one and back again. Yes, yes, very easily. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that may be the one of the explanations of why. Are you surprised that the drug just is because of a loss of function phenotype, or is that usually the case for um, drug resistance? Kind of drug resistance? Well, um, like you said, like uh, the story was that the ones that, just, that had the energy one mutation. No, drug resistance, I didn't find any um, drug resistance correlated to energy one. It, it was more of a morphological changes. Oh, but you said when it's always filamentous, it's usually resistant to treatment or something? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, they are actually thought to be more avirulent uh, in terms of just the bloodstream infection model. Uh, and people uh, suspect it's because yeast form contributes to dissemination in the bloodstream. Uh, so if it's locked in filamentous form, then it may not be able to disseminate as much as possible. But it's not related to drug resistance. You said survival advantage. Uh, potentially in context of uh, CN. Uh, oh, 